Church of Christ. Here at Bay Family, we are an open and affirming congregation. We believe that all God's children are welcome to come here and worship with us. And I'm going to have to take my glasses off. Just the opposite of last week, I don't have my contacts in, so I can't read with my glasses. All right. Here at Bay Family, uh, we have a saying, it goes that no matter where you are on life's journey or where you are on your spiritual journey, you are welcome here. Amen. Had a, this is a big weekend, isn't it? Monday Memorial Day? No, that's not okay. That's okay. Ah, got ahead of myself. But we did have pride. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 I saw some, I saw some posts on Facebook. This is, those are look good. Everybody's like having a good old time. So that's great. Well, welcome, and let's go ahead and start our music with our call to worship. Malcolm, what you got for us? Today we're going to say, gather us in, and I want everybody to help me. <laughs> we need help. Here in this place a new light is streaming, now is the darkness vanished away. See in this face our fears and our dreaming, brought here to you in the light of this day. Oh, gather us in the lost and forsaken. Gather us in the blind and the lame. Call to us now and we shall awaken. We shall arise at the sound of your name. We are the young, our lives are a mystery. We are the old who yearn for your name. We have been sung throughout all of history, called to be life to the whole human race. Gather us in the rich and the hungry, gather us in the proud and the strong. Give us a heart so weak and so lowly. Give us the courage to enter the song. Here we will take the wine and the water. Here we will take the bread of new birth. Here you shall call your sons and your daughters. Call us anew to 
unites us as a people and enables us to pray and intercede for the needs of others. As we gather together in God's name here at Faith Family United Church of Christ and live streaming this Sunday, we offer our prayers and thanksgiving to you. O oh God, this we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Mighty God, breathe your power into all who do and say. Empower all those who minister to us with the gifts of your Holy Spirit that they make available. Give them wisdom and understanding in the way and the actions that they take that are in, in accordance with your will. This we pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Creator God, help us to be constantly aware of the world's needs and problems. Give the leaders of the world the courage to oppose sin and tyranny, that they may be a greater unity among nations, that the common good of all humanity will be served by their decisions and their actions. Let your spirit touch those in areas of conflict in this world. This we pray. Lord, Lord God, our prayer. O God, we thank you for the gift of hospitality and the opportunities that we now have to share fellowship with one another, our families, our friends, and our neighbors as things begin to open up. We pray for those who are hesitant and finding it difficult to re-engage after such a long quarantine. Help us to support and encourage them, and keep them safely and at your peace. This we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Merciful God, we pray for the gift of healing to restore those who are sick, injured, and are suffering in many ways. We ask healing for Lefty as he has been in and out of the hospital recently, and prayers for Cindy, his daughter, the caregiver. We also ask prayers for safe travel for Barb and Maddie. Maddie will be joining Nancy and Barb for the summer months. We also raise before you now those we have asked for healing prayer. We ask it for themselves or for our loved ones, for those that we hold in our hearts and those that are known only to you. This we pray. Lord, 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 Lord. Holy God, through the death and resurrection of Jesus, you gave all of us a wonderful gift of eternal life. Though we mourn their passing, we remember before you those who have recently died and are still missed. We ask prayers of comfort for Dale and Wendy on the passing of Wendy's mother. We ask prayers for the family of Stephanie Baba, who passed away this week. You may recall Stephanie played percussion with our music team when we met at St. Mark's and then again here. We ask comforting prayers for Colleen Kay and her son, um, the loss of her son Ryan, who was struggling with mental illness and took his own life. He leaves behind not only his mother Colleen, but a wife and three children and ten. You may recall Colleen was very active in PFLAG and with Faith Family for many years when we met off Admiral Drive. Most loving God, we ask you to hold Dale's brother-in-law, Stephanie Baba, and Ryan, as well as their families in your loving arms. This we pray. Lord, Lord, Lord. Oh, most loving God, we ask you to hear these prayers, and we pray that you will hear and that we will hear you, because we do believe that you are our still speaking God. This we pray. Lord, hear our prayer.
almost, almost, but not quite. You know this is my favorite time of the service, when we get to share the love and peace of God with one another. Unfortunately, we can't hug each other. That's, we won't go blame that on the, on the council, right? No, um, for, for safety precautions. Um, so let's share the love and peace with one another by distance, love and peace. Love and peace, everyone. Love and peace. Those of you watching on Facebook, please share your love and peace by, by typing in love and peace on, uh, on your uh, bottom of your computer screen. <laughs> Don't forget those in the narcotics. Yes. <laughs> Today's reading is from Acts 2, 1 through 21. When the day of Pentecost had come, the disciples were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them the ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem, and at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in their native language. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all of these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and the residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own language, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, Thus is, let this be known to you, and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. <laughs> You're trying to make it very discreet so people wouldn't see it. Okay, I didn't. <laughs> so, so now you know, now you all know that that we have the little wipes right here. <laughs> Pour out my spirit on all flesh. Call on the name of the Lord and you will be saved. And I'm being told to take my mask off. See, y'all don't want me to take my mask off, but my wife, she thinks I'm beautiful and she wants to see me. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Mm -hmm. 
You ever get the feeling that, that things are moving too fast for you? That's the way I feel today. I, I guess it's because I didn't, I didn't have my routine, getting up at the normal time and doing everything. I just feel like the day's kind of rushing by and I'm just hanging on. I wonder if that's how they kind of felt on the day of Pentecost. Could you imagine what was going on? The wind, all of a sudden, somebody speaking in a foreign language, and everybody understanding that. Because you know, what we have is different groups of people. Um, in the military, it was the same way, I, and, and, it, and it's amazing because we have, my, my, my father was in the military, and he tells me stories of his military career, and I go, wow, it hasn't changed. You always have those, those groups of people. You get, you get the Hispanics will, will eat lunch together over here, and the blacks will eat lunch together over here, and, and then the white farm boys will eat lunch together over here, and then you got the city white people eat lunch over here and the women they eat lunch right here but everybody kind of and maybe it was like that at, at, on the day of Pentecost only those, those the groups were were because they spoke different languages and then all of a sudden they understood each other God has poured out God's spirit upon them But you know what? We're talking about inclusion and exclusion today. What is the basis for inclusion and exclusion? I like this little this little picture here. Inclusion. Can you tell them apart? <laughs> I think the answer to what is the basis for inclusion and exclusion, it comes from the individual, the very one asking the question. Ask yourself this, am I looking for something similar in someone else or another group, or am I looking for something that's different? See, when we look for similarities in someone else or a group, we are looking for a glimpse of ourselves. We're looking at them, but we want to include them in us. It's no longer them, they become we. It's the opposite. On the other hand, when we look for differences in people. We are not looking for ways to place them, we're looking for ways to place them in categories. And categories is a way to say they. And it is a tool, a tool that can be used to justify excluding them. See, it's all about us and them. I think the best way this can be illustrated is in a book by Theodore Geisel. I'll read you the first part of it. Now the star belly sneeches had bellies with stars. The plain bellied sneeches had none upon bars. Those stars weren't so big, they were really so small. You might think that such a thing wouldn't matter at all. But because they were they had stars, all the star belly sneeches would brag were the best kind of sneeches on the beaches. With their snoots in the air, they would sniff and they would snoot. We'll have nothing to do with the plain belly sort. And whenever they met someone, when they were out walking, they'd hike right past them without even talking. 
When the star belly children went out to play ball, could a plain belly get in the game? Not at all. You only could play if your belly had stars and the plain belly children had none upon the arms. Well, I'm sure that you know how the rest of it goes. By the way, Theodore Geisel, if you didn't know, Dr. Seuss. But he was trying to show children what the world is teaching. What the world is teaching. See, the world is all about exclusion and separation. Exclusion and separation. The world is about selfishness. I've been preaching this for a while now. If you haven't caught the underlying theme there. Individuals take care of themselves. They look out for number one. That's just the way of the world. How many times have you heard that? You know, as of being a preacher, many times I hear, yeah, but what you preach sounds great, but that's not the way the world works. Yes, that's why I'm trying to change it. Mm-hmm. See, I look, I've linked selfishness with sin. In fact, I think that sin broken down to its most common element is just selfishness. No matter what the sin, selfishness is the basis of it. To be able to care for oneself, you will need to have control. Isn't that true? If I'm going to look out for me, I have to be able to control my environment. I have to control those around me. And one of the ways that we do, we gain control, or we gain power. Gain power. This is the way of the world. Power rules the world. We gain power through money, of course. You have a lot of money, you have power. How many times do you kind of let somebody with lots of money say what they want? Or do what they want because you don't want to not have some of their power, their money. We gain power through being influential by cozying up to someone in power, trying to influence them, trying to kind of usurp their power without them knowing it. it reminds me of the fable, the emperor's new clothes. <laughs> Convince the, the one in power that whatever you want, and they believe you, then who's it really in power? You gain power through lying, <laughs> cheating, keeping secrets. Isn't that powerful? control people by keeping their secrets or telling them that we might not keep their secrets. Power. It's what rules the rule. We control people by keeping close ties to those in power. I think we see this in our political situations in the world today. We have the underlings and they capitulate to the one in power, just waiting for that person to fall so that they can step in and take control. That one day when they can take over. But what is the most, I want to say the best way, (laughs) because that doesn't sound right when we're talking about this, but I think the the, the easiest way to gain power is to, to separate, to separate 
and call them and us to separate, to make people believe that they over there are them and we over here are us. And so there's always enmity between the two of us. You can never trust them, but we are all together. I think about, uh, you know, remember the movie Independence Day? Oh, yeah. Great movie, huh? Yep. The uh, aliens attack, and they take out all of our communication satellites. So we can't group together as a whole Earth. But actually, that's exactly what we did. We grouped together. I mean, everybody, all nations, even nations that are sworn enemies. And they go together and they defeat the enemy, them, and us. I think that's what Paul tries to do when he talks about our battle is not against flesh and blood, but our, ba our battle is against powers, against principalities, against dominion. He's talking about ideas. And he says that is where our battle and our struggle is. It's not against human being against human being. It's when we have those ideas and those ideas clash with one another. And that clash brings the flesh and blood, human against human. And he says, that's not what we want. We want to separate what it means because we live in the spirit. We live in the spirit. And it's because of that spirit that we can set, a prop, set aside all these ideas and just look at each other as individuals. Because in the spirit, there is no us versus them, you versus me. Because when I look at a person, I am looking at the image of God. The world will always teach us to separate and exclude. Because this is the way that we can fulfill our selfishness and our desires for power and control. But we, as Christians, are called to be inclusive. We're not called to separate. We're not called to exclude people because the way they look or the way they think or who they are. We're supposed to include them. Matthew 28, 18, Jesus said, All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations. Did you hear that? Did I say that again? All nations. A call to be inclusive. Not just those that think like us, not the Christian nations. Not the countries that we find friendly. Not the nations. Not all nations, but the nations. Even the nations that are our enemies. All nations. The saying... All means all. There was a movie. I like to watch movies. <laughs> I like to take movies and, and, and see if I can turn them into a Christian theme or a theme of love. Anyway, a movie called The Silence. Two monks 
two Jesuit priests, excuse me, um, in the 1500s, lost their, their, their mentor in a missionary to Japan. And they go and they ask the archdiocese if they can go and find him because there was rumors that he apostated himself. In other words, he, he denied Jesus. So they go and it's very hard at this time in Japan because the warlords have taken over and they are ruthless. They are the epitome of evil power. If you do not agree with them, they will torture you until you're dead. And that's how the movie goes along. These guys are looking for their mentor and they're captured and the, the non-Christian or anti-Christian um, Japanese rulers put them through some incredible amount of torture. And in the end, I don't want to tell you where, where the end of the story. I want you to watch this movie. It's a great movie. Um, but in the end, you can see that no matter what happens, Christianity will always survive on the underside of society. Now, I don't agree with the theology that they took, but it was amazing that they were able to take this idea, this calling that Jesus called us to do, and they took it into a very hostile environment. And they tried to preach the gospel there. And today there are Christian um, communities in Japan. I think to myself, just think if they would have actually taught what we try to teach, a gospel of love instead of a gospel of power <laughs> through religion. wonder what would have happened at that but here you have it the Japanese overlords realized that power that they had and the ability to say these Christians that are coming in here are teaching you untraditional ways and so he put up that idea us versus them a very exclusive and yet, these people come in to Japan and try to include everyone. See, God is inclusive. Note the diversity on the day of Pentecost. Barb came up to me a little bit before, and she went over the names. The Parthians, the Medes, the Elamites, and the residents of Mesopotamia. The residents of Judea, the residents of Cappadocia, the residents of Pontus, the residents of Asia, the residents of Phrygia and Pamphylia, the residents of Egypt and the parts of Libya beyond belonging to Cyrene, and the visitors of Rome, both Jew and proselyte, Cretan and Arabs. In other words, people from all over the world people from all over the world. At that time, that was pretty much the world. Now look at what Peter, how Peter interprets the events. Do you imagine sitting there and all of a sudden the wind blows and all that? And as, as we read in the text, some people were aghast, astonished. Mm -hmm. And other peoples, you always get those one people that, that oh, they had the answer for it. Oh, these guys are drunk. That's what's wrong. But Peter interprets it. And he says, this has been prophesied by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on, there it is, there's that word, all flesh. 
That means all people. Not just the God's chosen people, but again, all people. How inclusive is that? All means all. But I want to look at it a little bit further. What is the purpose of God pouring out His Spirit? See, God has to access, God has given access to the Spirit to everyone. To everyone. This hasn't been done before. It's usually just the prophets. He pours out his spirit on a prophet, and the prophet prophesies. And the spirit leaves him. Now everyone has access to the spirit. The way to this access is through a loving spirit of your own. See, I always said, when someone gives a gift, don't you have to receive it? Don't you have to take it, tell them thank you, open it before you can use the gift? That's how it is here too. God poured out His Spirit, but we have to accept the Spirit. And we accept the Spirit through repentance and through changing our life into not the life of the world, but a life of spirit, a life of love. Seeking God's way of life and not the world's selfish ways This is the way that we accept the Spirit of God. When we confess our sins, that is when we confess that we are selfish and we have an innate desire to take care of number one because of our flesh. We think only of ourselves. But when we think of all people, all flesh, and we think what's best for all of us, that's when we're living in the Spirit. That's when we can say that we accepted the Spirit of God. The second purpose is a heavenly party. A heavenly party. If we go through and look at the Gospels, a lot of times Jesus will talk about heaven as a, a, a feast or some kind of a bridal um, shower, if you will. Um, but it's a heavenly party, right? Imagine a party that's so grand that anyone would kill to be invited to this party. Now, kill, figuratively, of course. The best food by all the best chefs around the world and it's all there at this party. The best music by the best artists, by the best singers, by the best DJs and any musical artist that everyone and anyone would just love to go and listen to. The best location, a place where you can hang out in a corner by yourself, if that's your thing. Or where you can get caught up in a crowd. The best party ever. I can say that one last time. The best party ever, dude. <laughs> now there's a catch to this party. While everyone is invited, there is only one catch to get into that party and is you have to have a password only thing is you don't get an invitation but invitations are by mouth only and only the people that have been invited person to person know the password 
Those that are throwing the party have told the people, and those people are telling everyone else that they are invited. We have been invited. Are we telling everyone about this great party? We have given the task to tell everyone and tell everyone the password. I have a thought about heaven. This is off the subject, by the way. The more that I thought about heaven and what Jesus says about heaven, the more that I read what other people's views of heaven and understanding what heaven is, I'm not convinced that heaven is actually a place that we go. Rather, I'm beginning to believe that heaven is a state of being, a state of mind, if you will. It is when we can rest in God, relinquishing all of our control, and just embrace all of what God has to offer. Maybe that is why Jesus taught us to pray on earth as it is in heaven in that he was saying all of creation, or at least all of humanity, needs to relinquish control to God and just embrace all of what God has to offer, then that is what we have when we have heaven on earth. I don't know. Like I said, that was just a thought. I hope for you, I hope you take that and you and you study it for yourself, and you come up with an understanding for yourself. I hope that helps you on your path, your journey to seeking God. Anyway, where is that? We are invited to the party. We have the we are tasked with telling everyone the password. By the way, the password to get into the party? Something that I have preached many, many times. Amen. 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 We're going to sing All Are Welcome. I think it's also known as Let Us Build Up. Again, help us out. Build a house where love can dwell and all can safely live. A place where saints and children tell how hearts learn to forgive. Build up hopes and dreams and visions, rock of faith and vault of praise. In the love of Christ shall end division. Far welcome, far welcome, far welcome in this place. Let us build a house where love is found in water, wine, and wheat. A bank with all on holy ground where peace and justice meet. Hear the love of God through Jesus is revealed in time and space. As we share in Christ the peace that frees us, all are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place. Let us build a house where hands will on the wood and stone to heal and strengthen, serve and teach and live the word they've known. Give the outcast and the stranger bear the image of God's face. Let us bring an end to fear and danger. All are welcome, all are welcome. All are welcome in this place. Let us 
Let's build a house where all our neighbors, songs and visions heard, and love and treasure taught and claimed as words within the word. Fill the tears and cries and laughter, prayers of faith and songs of praise. Let this house proclaim from floor to rafter, our welcome, our welcome, our welcome in this place. Amen, all our welcome. God, we come to you and we thank you for all the many blessings that you give us in our lives. We thank you for the opportunity to give back just a portion of what you've blessed us with. May you use it and use those who see to it that it is used for your purpose of spreading the love that you have showed us through your Son, Jesus Christ, to all the world and including everyone and all people. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Bearing our hearts. On the night that Jesus would offer himself so that all might know love, he called to himself all those he loved and all who loved him and ate with them. At the meal, he took bread and he blessed it and he broke it and he offered to them, saying, This is the take and eat. This is my body broken for you. My heart broken open for you and for all. When you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup and he blessed it. And raising it, he said, Take this cup and drink of it. It is the cup of the new covenant of love that is without boundary or condition. The cup of one, a love, that is poured out for you and for all. Do this in remembrance of me. Join with me as you will and see fit in the uh, saying of the prayer of transformation. God, we ask that you take these gifts of the earth, these gifts here before us, entrusted us here to each of us in this room, and transform them so that they may become whole and holy in you, May we become one body, the body of Christ, holy in you. Amen. If you will, please stand. Something we haven't done in a while. And, and recite with me the Lord's Prayer. Please be, feel comfortable to use um, any uh, term for the divine that you see fit. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us the same our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Here at uh, Faith Family, here at Faith Family, we believe in a open communion. That is, it is the Lord who invites you to the table, and not any of us. So, as you see fit, let us partake in the Lord's Supper. The body of Christ.
the cup of the new covenant. A prayer of thanksgiving. Loving God, we give thanks for the love you shared through your Son. We give thanks for calling us to be the, your people, a people <coughs> reconciled back to you through that love. We give thanks for calling us together here at Faith Family UCC to follow you with our whole hearts and our whole souls and call us to have love for others as you have loved us. We pray and we thank you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Join us in singing, come as you are. And again, I need all the help I can get. <laughs> Come out of sadness wherever you've been. Come brokenhearted, let rescue begin. Come find your mercy, O oh sinner, come near. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can heal. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can heal. So lay down your burden, lay down your shame. All who are broken, lift up your face. A wonder come home, you're not too far. So lay down your curse, lay down your heart, come as you are. There's hope for the hopeless and all those who stray. Come sit at the table, come taste the grace, and rest from the weary. Rest that endures, earth has no sorrow that heaven can't cure. Sorry about that. Lay down your burden, lay down your shame. All who are broken, lift up your face. So lay down your curse, lay down your heart, come as you are, come as you are, all is his come as you Sinner, be still. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can heal. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can heal. So lay down your burdens. Lay down your shame. All who are broken. Lift up your face, O wanderer, come home, you're not too far. So lay down your curse, lay down your heart, come as you are.
Good morning. A couple of uh, quick announcements. Um, that was beautiful, by the way. I was really touched by that. Thank you. Um, first of all, as some of you may know, we had a celebration of life on Sunday for Natalie's mom. Um, and I just want to thank, I know a lot of people in the congregation, we pulled, we pulled it together. And um, I just want to thank everyone that supported that. And I just want to say, Natalie, if I had a family that loved me, like your family does, and Sean's family. Um, it was a beautiful thing to see how much they love you and they care about you. I didn't mean to upset you, but I just wanted you to know that that was beautiful for us to observe that. Um, the other thing is, um, at the council meeting on Monday night, the council made a decision to install digital locks on the two doors that enter into the narthex. So if you have keys to the church, and you still need keys to the church, please send me an email or Peter or someone on the council so that we can get you a code that you'll be able to use to get in the doors. Same thing happens if you don't need keys, but you find yourself here and you need to get in, give us one of us a call. We can help you out. So we're going to try and eliminate all these keys that are out there. And some people only have a key to the front door. Only It's like, it's a mess. So That's we're a great to, idea. So we're going to do that. Thank you. And we're also going to install a digital lockbox so if you need to get in other rooms, then that's a separate code if you needed to get into the county room or the pastor's office or whatever the case may be. So be looking for that. Those will be going in sometime maybe by the end, by the middle of June. I can't say. Um, the other thing, again, I said it last week, indoor church is back to stay. So I know there's still some confusion out there that maybe it was only every two weeks. So if it's every Sunday... And if you weren't at the, at the um, council meeting, you didn't hear that the pastoral search committee, um, chaired by um, Peter, made an announcement that they are going to begin the process of writing an ad and accepting applications and interviewing for a pastor. So um, ideally, Peter's timeline was September, but that may be longer. We don't know what's going to happen, but... I just wanted to let everyone know that. And the last thing on my list here is that after church on Sunday, June 13th, I didn't write the date down, but it's Sunday, I think, um, we're going to have a congregational meeting to discuss sale of property. And um, Peter will have a presentation for us. And there will be some more information that comes out about this in the next day or so. Uh, council's meeting today in executive session to decide how to present that to you all. And so we will be doing that in the next, early this week. So be on the lookout for that. Um, come and please come and support and have your say. We want to hear from everyone. Um, I guess that's it. Is there anything else? We'd be doing that so we could do church somewhere else, right? Well, it depends on what we decide. Okay. There's some there's some proposals, there's some options that we have, and we um, if Peter made a proposal at the at the council meeting for a couple different options. So I okay. guess we'll we'll get that we'll send that information out to everyone so that when you come to the meeting you'll be informed. You're not just going to show up and not know what we're talking about. And I think that would you like to make a plea for members of the party? Oh yes, because I uh, advertise every song. We need help. If there's any way you can play an instrument, um, I'd love to have you come join me. And uh, don't be afraid. If anybody wants to learn how to play an instrument, let me know, and I'll teach them how to play guitar. Yeah. And but, I want to say uh, a really deep gratitude, thanks to Aaron, who's here today, running the board in the back. Yeah. I didn't have to do that. Thank you. You noticed last week there was some lag, and I wasn't really paying attention. So uh, I appreciate you. And there was a card that someone put in the offering that I just wanted to read. Um, there was a donation inside. It said, please accept this donation in loving memory of Rosemary Del Sordo. And that is all. I count, I count seven spaces over there that we can put chairs. Maybe eight. Oh, yeah. We That's can really right. revise this. So what I want to do is I want to preach to a bunch of empty chairs out here and have everybody in the choir. <laughs> let's, let's
let's go ahead and bless each other with um, the benediction. If you all want to stand as we as we do the benediction and sing our, our closing song. Christ has no body but ours, no hands, no feet, nor nails but ours. Ours are the eyes to which Christ's compassion is the most powerful world. Ours are the feet and wheels with which Christ goes about doing good, and ours are the hands with which Christ blesses us now and blesses all the world. Amen. Our closing song is Peace I Believe with You, My Friend. Peace with you, my friend. Shall my peace in all you do. Peace my friend, I give to you so you can give to others too. To share God's love is why I came. To show God's Yeah. <laughs>